Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we do March 2014's Creepypasta of the Month called Eric. It's about Animal Crossing. I know I haven't done many other Creepypasta of the Month simply because I'm gearing more towards the gaming side, but that being said, we'll go to them eventually soon, but let's dive right into this Creepypasta. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is a game where you play as a human living in a town full of animals. A game where responsibility really shows. From helping out your neighbors and paying the uh, debts of your house, when I first heard about Animal Crossing, I thought it was really stupid. The game looked like something a seven-year-old would play. I was about 13 when I discovered Animal Crossing, so my opinion on a game like this would make sense. One night while visiting a friend, though, I saw that he had a copy of Animal Crossing. I made fun of him for owning the game. He told me that he liked the game and he kept saying good things about it. But all I did was laugh at him about how much he was praising it. We almost got into an argument over the game. My friend offered me a bet to play the game for a whole week. I assumed that he wanted me to see why he loves it and expects me to enjoy it just as much as he did. I accepted his offer and went off home to play the game. A week. Only a week I got this game till. I started the game and laughed right away at the title screen about how babyish it looked. My brother even snickered at me when he took a look at the game. After he left and just went ahead, I hit the start button and started playing the game. After spending a couple of hours on it, it was not too long until I got hooked into the game. I was so hooked to this game, so much that during school I couldn't wait to go home just to play it. Hours became days, days became weeks, and weeks became months. I had the game for two months, yes, I did forget to return it to my friend. When I visited my friend he mentioned about the game since he had forgotten that he lended it to me. I told him that I was going to give it back to him, but he was kind enough to let me keep it. I gave out a huge sigh of relief to hear him say that. I spent about two years playing this game, and I ended up hearing that this game had a sequel, Animal Crossing Wild World, and it was already out. I was ready for this game, and I even heard it was out for the DS, in, in which I already have. I ended up getting it as a gift for my 15th birthday. It was a gift I did not regret. During my life, I also had bought Animal Crossing City Folk, but sadly though, I didn't spend too much time on it. I later then found out that I mostly like Animal Crossing on a handheld better than on a console. In 2011 I got a 3DS for Christmas and also got Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D with it. But I didn't get a lot of games for the system until later in 2013. I have mostly been waiting for the new Animal Crossing game New Leaf since hearing about it back in E3 of 2010. It's one of the only games I wanted to get along with Pokemon X and Y for 2013 so after saving my money. I managed to get New Leaf and started a new and exciting life. I started the game and I found myself sitting once again in a train. I sat there and saw a blue and white cat walking up to me. It was Rover. I laughed at how many times people had to run into this guy before they get into their town. Anyways, Rover did the usual Animal Crossing beginner step. Ask for your name, ask what your gender is, and asking what the name of my town is going to be. It took me a while to name the town, the reason why it took me so long is because my past town name I gave out in earlier games was mostly based off other games like Hyrule, since I'm a huge Zelda fan. Yes, I wasn't very creative back then. After sitting there thinking, I finally came up with a name, Everlast. The name came out of nowhere in my head and I liked it. Rover then proceeded to show me some maps just to show how the layout of my town is going to look like. After completing everything, I was told that we were arriving in my town. As I exited out of the train station, I was uh, met with something different than past games. This time I didn't meet Tom Nook. No? This time I was surrounded by the animal villagers, and I was talking to a dog. She and the other animals said welcome, and the dog told me that I was the new mayor of this town. Funny how they think that the mayor they want just had to be a fucking human of all things. We talked, and I mostly told her that you got it wrong, and everything. But she just ignored me, and I went with it? She showed me where the town hall was, so after I talked to her, I headed down there. I wanted to talk to the other animals, but I needed to get this done as soon as possible. I entered the town hall and talked to the dog. The dog's name is uh, Isabel. Isabel told me that I need a house, and she asked me to head to the main street to a place called Nook's Homes in order to get one. I exited the town hall and proceeded to the main street. I saw a blue building to the left of the post office, and as I entered, I saw a familiar face. Tom Nook. I talked to Tom about me being the mayor and asking him for a house. After the conversation, he went outside with me in a town to make a house. I told Tom that I wanted to have my house build just in the middle of nowhere, away from the other houses. Nook then set me up 
a yellow tent, and told me that my house will be built by tomorrow morning. I went off to Isabel and told her that I finished what I was supposed to do. Isabel asked me for my birthday and gives me an ID card. Afterward, she tells me that I need to head down to the event plaza for a ceremony. I arrived at the plaza to see a dirt area, and I, and I was standing in front of Isabel. Once again, we were surrounded by the animal neighbors. Isabel handed me a sapling, and I planted it. Afterwards, Isabel left to do her original work, and I was standing there in the plaza. I had nothing else to do, so I went and talked to my animal neighbors. The neighbors I have are one cat, two dogs, one eagle, and a wolf. After talking to my neighbor, I went back to Tom. Tom told me that I need to pay my loan in order to pay my house. The amount he wanted was 10,000 bells. He tells me that I could get this much money by doing the usual thing when starting on an animal crossing, you know, shape trees to obtain fruits, getting seashells, hunting bugs, and fishing for fish. I did this for about 10 minutes and I managed to make around 12,000 bells. I paid Tom the money and he tells me that my house can now be made. Now that I finally paid off the debt, I turned off my game since it was nearly 11 at night and I had school tomorrow. <sighs> Saved the game and went off to bed. I got into the game after I finished doing some homework for school, and as soon as I entered the game, I saw that my house was finally made. It was small on the outside and pretty damn small inside. Also, I went inside the house. Uh, as I went inside, Isabel just came in behind me. She gives me a wallpaper and gives me instructions on how to design the inside of my house and using the camera. When she was done, Isabel headed off back to the town hall after telling me the instructions. I was left standing in my house and I went off to hunt for some more bugs and fishes just to be ready for my next loan for the house. I spent about two hours catching bugs and fishing for fish. During those sessions, I talked to my animal neighbors and I had to do errands for them, mostly doing it to get free items for my house and for myself. Looking for bugs and fish, I managed to make up to 12,000 bells once again. I went out to see Tom and he tells me the, uh, the next loan for my house is for about like 39,800 bells. As I was done talking to Tom, I went off to my town to find my bugs and fishes to make it up for the loan. I managed to make up around 9,000 bells off bugs and fishes and had about 21,000 bells in total. It wasn't enough, but it was better than, you know, nothing. Once again, it was getting late and I had to get ready for school in the morning. I saved the game, went off to bed for school. Two days later. One of the best things, in my opinion, of the Animal Crossing games is the online. The online feature was something that really got my interest. It first came out for Wild World, and it was something I was really interested in at the time. The fact that others can come into your town, help you with your house, and maybe give items that you don't even own, it was very ambitious. Unfortunately for all its ambitions, I did not use it in Wild World since I didn't have good internet back then. When I got City Folk, I also didn't use the online at all since, to be honest, I didn't really have a lot of friends. Now, the moment I got New Leaf, I have a good internet connection and I am ready to use the online feature on it. So I decided to have my town open just for others to do. I didn't really expect a lot to enter my town, but it would have been nice to see other people instead of animals all the time. I didn't have a lot of friends, so this would be a good opportunity to meet new people who have the same interest I do. One night though, while I was doing an assignment for an animal, I got a notice about someone that just entered my town. I stopped doing what I was doing and ran to the train station. Upon walking up to the station, I stop and I see someone. It was a guy. He was wearing a striped green shirt, his face was the default face for the character, and he was holding a slingshot. I said hello to him, and after I said hello, he just ran to the left off screen. I gave chase after him, and he stopped in front of one of the animal's houses he put his slingshot away. He finally said to me, Hi. I kind of laughed at those words. I thought this person was a child younger than me. I just responded with saying, What are you doing here? Once again, he just runs away, and again, I chased him. He stopped in front of the, one of the ponds and spun around in place. I asked what he was doing in my town again. He stopped in place while he was spinning. He looked at me. You got globe? I just stand there in silence as he just continued to spin in place. No, I don't. After I said to him, he once again runs away. He instantly stops by near river. He looks at me and spun in place again. <laughs> I started to laugh in real life. This guy was funny to watch. He stopped spinning around and said, I got something for you. And then proceeds to, shocker, spin again. What do you got for me? I asked. He stops again, facing his right. He dropped around 22,000 bells below him. He once again spins. I was stunned. How much money I'm mostly making a game is around like 12,000 bells. With this much, I was able to afford to spend the loan I have for the house. I just stood there watching him as he still spins. I don't want to take it from him. I thought he was joking and probably will take it back. But he just says, take it while he spins. 
I walked up to him and picked it up. Afterwards, he ran away. While I was following him, he started bugging out. Nice town. As soon as he said that he was gone, I assumed that he lost connection with my town. It's a good thing he left after he gave me the money, though. I then just stood there in place where he disconnected while other animals were walking around me with shovels and fishing poles. I now have enough money to pay for my home thanks to this random person. I afterwards ran to Nook to pay the debt. The next day, as I exited out of my home, I saw my mailbox flashing. I ended up getting four letters, three of the letters from my neighbors, while the fourth one was from someone else, from Eric. That's who the letter was from. The letter had a present with it. I opened the letter and read what it was inside. Thank you for spending time with me. I had fun. Here is a gift for you. Enjoy. Smiley face from Eric. Eric was his name. I was glad since I never had the chance of asking him for his name or even a thank you when he gave me the bells. I wanted to send him the letter back, but unfortunately I don't have his friend code, so I'm unable to send him anything. After reading the letter, I went off to start my day. On my way to Nook Lane's store, I saw a buried item spot right beside one of my neighbor's house. I dug and ended up digging out a slingshot. My eyes were wide open. I'd never gotten anything like this before. But I then remember back to yesterday. Eric had a slingshot when he first arrived to my town. Could this have been his? I said this to myself as I fixed the hole. I continued to think about the slingshot as I make my way to Nookling Shop. Did he somehow enter my town when I wasn't here and buried this? I shook off the thought about it and entered the Nookling Shop. I went on with my day doing the usual stuff by helping out animals, and while I was helping them, a reminder struck me. I forgot to open up the gift that Eric gave me. I opened my inventory and went to the letter section and grabbed the present and opened it. It ended up being an ebony piano. The smile was on my face as I went home to place it. I thanked Eric in my head as I entered my home. I placed the piano in the far left corner of my house. As for my house, it wasn't very big. It was in its second stage of development. My home has a blue wallpaper and a green carpet. In the inside of my house, I have like the single bed in the right hand corner, a dresser that was near it, that was given to me by one of my neighbors, and a candle that I bought from the store. I started playing with the piano, and when I mean by playing, I mean by mashing the A button multiple times. After setting up the piano, I went back out. It was nearly 10, and I was about to get off the game. I was getting tired and a bit bored, frankly. I went off to finish the night by looking for any buried items and talking to the remaining animals that were still awake at the time. Just before I was going to head off, I got another notice. Someone entered my town. Must be Eric again. Like before, I ran to the station to greet him. I saw Eric, but this time wearing something different. He was wearing a diamond-shaped t-shirt, and he had a green hat on. I stood there waiting, just staring at him. Hey there, Eric. Eric just stood there still. Then out of nowhere, he spun around like before and ran off past me. I was kind of getting annoyed by this. He really is acting like a child. But then again, I thought maybe he was one. Again, like before, I ran after him. He stopped near one of my neighbor's houses, staring at the side left of the wall. Eric then turned to his corner right. Where's your home? This caught me by surprise. Over here? I then went off to my home with Eric falling behind, but he started to stop sometimes, thought he was lagging again. Here's my home. I stood there in front to in front of the door. Thanks for the 22,000 bells from yesterday. He spun around in place and stopped to turn to his back and said, no problem. I gave it a small chuckle due to the misspell, but I was glad that he was okay with it. I was about to enter my house when Eric said, nice home, and just like that, he was gone. I just stood there while scratching my head. He did this yesterday. He also said, nice town, and left. I didn't know if he was messing with me, since he didn't even see the inside of my house. I went inside my house anyways. I then remembered that I forgot to ask him for the friend coach. Eric had already left, and it was getting late. I just decided to go to bed. I got into the game earlier than I normally do, about 10 in the morning. I saw that I got a letter again. I got two letters this time. One was from the animal and the other one was from Eric. I had fun again, let's hang out again, from Eric. After the let's hang out again, he actually gave me his friend code. It's as if he read my mind, or it was just luck. I'll lean with that. I was, I was disappointed to see that there was no present this time, but before I went off into the town, I decided to enter his friend code. After I, Afterwards, I then went off to start my day. The day was a bit slow, only had to do about three errands for the animals today, and shook some trees, and sold the f you know, fruits to Nook. While I was inside Nookling's store, I decided to grab some letters. Since I now have Eric's friend code, I can finally write a letter to him. Before I even started to write out a letter, I looked online to find out how to send the letters to other players. I found out that I can't send letters to people outside my town from within my town, like any other neighbor. The answer to my question is that I would have to be in his town to send him a letter. I guess how he keeps sending me letters since he does end up entering my town, which is very strange and creepy. Then again, I 
did open up my town for people to join in. After about an hour, I had nothing to do, since I finally have Eric's friend code and decided to to his town. I went to the train station, found Eric's name, and saw the name of his town. Leafy. I entered the train and headed off to his town. To be honest, I didn't want to run into him. I wanted to surprise him as he did to me. I had the only thing I was able to buy, a red armchair, and send my inventory as a gift to him, since he, you know, did get me a gift, so I thought of returning the favor. After about a minute of connection trying, I arrived at his town. Leafy. That was the name of his town. Interesting name. Every name has a reason, especially for a town. I assumed he named this town Leafy because of trees? I named my town Everlast because I wanted to my town to Everlast forever. <laughs> kind of cheesy, I know. Anyways, as I exit out of the station, I see that his town looks a lot more developed than mine. He has his ground covered in pictures of sidewalks and roads, all neatly placed, and he made it look like how a real town should look. I was really impressed. For someone who speaks like he is using a keyboard for the first time, he sure does have a good looking town. I'm actually jealous, but then again, he could have been playing this game longer than I have. I wanted to go to this post office right away, but I couldn't help to explore his town. I didn't. I kind of didn't want to look around because just in case I end up running into him while I'm looking at his town, but it would have come to me since it would have notified him about my visit. While exploring, I saw animals that I have back in my town. It was a bit creepy since they didn't know me, and yet they also live back in my town. After about five minutes of exploring this well-done town, I went to his post office and gave the letter to Pelly and telling her to send it to Eric. Thank you for the 22,000 bells you gave me, it really did help me. I also wanted to thank you for the piano. It looks very nice in my home and s still have it. In response to the kindness you've shown me, I thought of repaying you. I don't have a lot of bells, but I hope this will do. From XXXXX. After I gave the letter and gift away, I headed to the train station and still hoped that I didn't run into him. I started to lag while on my way to the train station. If I ended up losing connection, it wouldn't matter as long as, you know, I sent the letter to him. I managed to get to the station and headed back to my town. When I arrived, I went back to my house to save, since I was getting bored. As I make my way back to my house, I saw one of the neighbors upset. I ran up to her and she was crying, and saying to leave me alone, and went off upset. I thought she got into a fight with one of the other animals and just continued off to my house. While making my way, I saw another animal upset. He said, like, what did I do? But he wasn't crying unlike the other one. I thought this was the animal that got into a fight with the other one. Nearing my house, I saw an animal who was thrashing about and looking pretty pissed. I ended up talking to her and she was just blowing steam like the other one. She says that her day was ruined. I was really confused of what was going on. Maybe he got into a fight with an animal, fell into a pitfall trap. I don't know. When I approached my house, I saw that it was surrounded by holes and flowers. I had a lot of flowers around my house. I didn't even make an ordinance for a beautiful town, so it was very strange to me. I even saw that I had a letter in my mailbox. I pulled out my shovel and fixed the holes that were around my house. The flowers that were placed around my home were dandelions and roses. All were placed in a neatly side-by-side -side order. After fixing the holes, I took out a letter that was inside my mailbox. I had two letters, one from an animal and the other from, obviously, Eric. You have a nice town. Your animals are not nice. I saw your home. It looked very, very nice. Pretty nice. Nice? From Eric? I just looked at the letter with a displeased face. I I was a bit creeped out. I didn't know if it was his poor writing that did it, or it was the holes around my home that I know I didn't put. Before I went inside my house, I looked around the town to see if there was any other problems with my neighbors since he said that my animals are not nice, so I hope that he didn't piss them off or make them cry. As I made my way to their homes, I saw even more animals sad and angry. What the hell did he do? I thought as I made my way to their houses. I approached one of their homes and saw that the same thing that he did to my house, holes and flowers, so flowers were also the same like the ones at my home. I wanted to fix it, but I needed to see if the other homes were the same. Making my way to another house, I see more animals sat and angry. I also ended seeing holes placed everywhere in my town's field. I ran to the second house, same thing, ran into another house, saw more randomly placed holes. The third house I end up arriving is the same. I spent about six minutes exploring and seeing more of the same. I was really pissed. This is going to take me forever to clean. After seeing all the damage you did, I start to regret sending that letter now. Hell, even that armchair. I kind of want it now. I had a feeling that he entered my town while I was in this. Creepy. It's like he knew. Or was it just a coincidence? The next day I felt relieved to see my town back to normal. It took me around 12 minutes to fix the damage done by him. When I exited my house, I saw that I had letters. I wonder who this letter is going to be from. I said in a sarcastic tone while looking through my mailbox. Only one letter and... Oh, shocker, it's from Eric. Thank you for the gift, it looks nice. Friend Eric. 
friend? I'm guessing a friend. Really though, he calls me friend after the mess he made? He was happy for the gift, but I wasn't happy for what he did. I saw that he sent me a gift along with the letter. I wondered if he sent this before or after the mess. The present ended up being a basketball hoop. I wanted to throw this item away since the damage has been done to my town, but I kept it. Just because I needed some form of decoration for my home. After I closed the letter, I went off to my daily business in my town. I ended up going to the island to get some rare bugs. There were bugs that can cost up to 10,000 bells. I found my lucky break for making money since I knew that picking fruit wasn't going to help me with my debts forever. I went in and out of the island and go into the store to sell the bugs. Selling all the bugs I found on the island made up to over 100,000 bells. I still needed about 20,000 bells to pay off the debt, but it was getting late, so I went to my house and just saved. Then I turned off the game to relax. It was late at night, and I woke up to the sound of my neighbor's loud dog. It was, very it was a very quiet night. I heard nothing but sounds and crickets roam through my area. So since I was up, I decided to go into the game and see if there were any problems going on in the town. Upon entering my town, I noticed that there was no one around and everyone was sleeping. I checked the game's clock and saw that it was 3.34 in the morning, and the only sounds that were heard were the sounds of music and also crickets. While wandering around the town, I only ended up seeing one villager mindlessly wandering around the night with a shovel in his hand. Creepy. I spent around 10 minutes walking around the night, making sure nothing has happened while I was sleeping. Nothing. Nothing was touched. No holes were dug and no random flowers were planted. It was normal. I walked past the train station on my way back to the house and ended up stopping in front of it. Should I do the same? Any person who went through what I just went through would do the same damage they caused them. Just return the favor, I guess. But I wasn't that kind of person. I did fix a mess, and it would be mean just to do it back. Besides, I was tired. I headed to my house and saved. It was Saturday morning and both my parents were out working. I didn't have anything else to do in the house. I did have my breakfast and took a shower, though I didn't have anything else to do. All my homework was completed, but I also found out this morning that I had a massive stomach cramp. I went to grab some medicine and decided to play some Animal Crossing while waiting for the medicine to affect. Before I went to play Animal Crossing, I heard the mailbox open up. I went to open the door to obtain the mail. In the mailbox, I pulled out three letters. Two were for my father and the other a blank envelope. I asked the mailman just before he went out of my sight and asked him who sent this blank letter, and he turned to me and said that he doesn't know. The mailman then smiled and walked away, saying, have a good day. I closed the door, looked at the mail, like I said, it was blank, no return address, the only address that was on it was mine, and a small stamp in the upper left corner of the letter. I put down the two letters for my father and I opened up the, you know, letter, the unknown, and it just had the words, nice house, friend, from Eric. I was nearly frozen. Everything was spinning around me. I thought it was a dream. Like, how in the hell? No, 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 no. How in the fucking hell? I stood there with my eyes, all wide and my mouth hanging. I was breathing heavily and started shaking, and my stomach cramp was getting worse as I stood there. Who the hell is this guy? I couldn't do anything in return. I have no address. My alternative approach was to call the cops or contact my parents, but I didn't want to. I wanted to find out who he is myself. I know this sounds crazy to do. Pretty much any sane person would call the cops, or anyone for that matter, when you end up getting a letter from someone who knows where you actually live. When I rushed to my room, I felt a bit slow, and for some reason my vision was going blurry. I felt like I was going to throw up, so I rushed to the bathroom instead and threw up in the toilet. It wasn't the best morning I ever had. I ended up getting a letter from a guy I met in Animal Fucking Crossing, and now I'm throwing up. What a fucking morning. I sat there with my head near the toilet for about a good couple of minutes. I couldn't tell how long I was there since I didn't have the time with me. I pushed myself up, walked to my room. I was moving slowly to my room, but the pain in the stomach wasn't as bad as before, so that's a plus. When I finally entered the room, I grabbed my 3DS, booted the game up, and hopefully find Eric. When I got into the game, I headed directly to Eric's town. I hope that I ran into him so I can ask him how does he know where I live. While walking into the town, I started thinking, is he an old friend of mine from school, or is he someone I once knew? Is this a prank? Some kid being an idiot? No. This person knows where I live. My next thought was that he must be some pervert who gets off by playing as a kid in Animal Crossing. <sighs> Shivers sure as a last thought came across. I finally arrived at Leafy and headed to his home. Funny thing is, I have never seen his house when I visited the first time. I was too busy exploring his town. When I got to his house, I stopped in my place and took a look at his house. His home is a mansion. I was stunned by this, like I said before. For someone who speaks like that using a keyboard for the first time, he sure does have a good looking town. Now that can be said about his house as well. I entered his house and saw that so I'm standing there looking at me. I was really creeped out. It's like he knew I was going to his town. Eric was wearing a paw t-shirt and has a paperboy hat on. Upon looking at his house, I came to realize that the inside of the house looked amazing. The main room had a full modern set look, the walls were the exotic wallpaper, and his carpet was a regal carpet. 
I wanted to look around his house, but I guess I should have done that before all these fucked up things started happening. Who are you? How do you know where I live? Silence. Afterwards, he spun around in place. I was getting really tired of this bullshit. Who are you? He stopped and looked at me. Eric. He spun in place again. He stopped. You're my friend. First friend I had since. I don't believe him. I thought he was fucking with me. Leave me alone. I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. He stood there. Probably making another way to act all kitty. You're my friend, he managed to say. Friend right this time, by the way. Who are you? Tell me. In reality, I was boiling. My 3DS was shaking due to my hands that were also shaking. Eric is my name. I wanted to say no shit. But then after that, I would ask the same question over and over again. Then I find myself caught in a loop with him. I'm leaving. Before I head for the door, he said quickly, Don't leave me. Leave him. I don't know for a couple days. He's making him sound like I've known him for years. I just ignored him and went off to my own town. Didn't hesitate to stop. Went to the train station. Got in the train. Went home. Got on the game earlier than normal. It was 8 o'clock in the morning. Saw that I had mail. Opened it. Four letters once again. Three were from the animals. And one was, Shocker, Eric. You leave. You're my friend, right? I had fun with you. From Eric. Friend? He still calls me that? Fun, he says? The crazy bastard knows where I live! And then as a ball to say that he had fun, I had a feeling that he went into my town again. And that wasn't due to this letter. I went around to my town to see if he'd made any more holes or placed more flowers. Surprisingly, he didn't. I guess it was just that one time he did it. It was a quiet day in my town. I didn't do a lot of errands for the animals. I mostly spent my free time digging up fossils, planting fruit for fruit trees, and going to the island. Spending about a near 20 minutes of the island, I managed to make around 20,000 bells, the amount I needed to pay off my third house debt. After I paid Nook, I went through my day, still going into the island and getting more money. It was nearly four, and I was wandering around town until I got a notice. Eric. I slowly made my way back to the station and saw Eric leaving out into the train. Eric was wearing a skull t-shirt and black glasses on him. We both perfectly faced at each other. What are you doing here? After I asked him, he just spun in place as usual. After his spinning, he ran to the right. Chased him again. This is starting to feel like the time we first met. But this time I wasn't confused. No, this time I was pissed. The place he went to was the post office. I was guessing he was going to send me a mail. I bet he did not want me while he was doing it. But I don't care. He walked up to Pelly and gave her a letter. I looked at me and spun around. He stopped to his left corner. Goodbye, friend. And then left. I assume he disconnected from the game again. And also again, he said something and then he just leaves. Goodbye, friend. Will this be the last time I see him? I was looking to see if there was a way to ban someone from entering your world. I was going to do that, but since he said goodbye, I thought this is really the last time I'll ever see him. I doubt that very much. He may just be joining my town or, you know, without me being here. I had to wait until I got this letter to see what he sent me. I'm not really looking forward to it. It's mostly going to be a bunch of poorly written grammar. I got in the game at 11, and I saw that the mailbox had mail. I knew it was Eric. I opened up the mailbox and saw two letters, one from Nook and the other from Eric. It's hot here. So hot. From Eric. It's hot here? Not really what I expected him to say, but maybe he was talking about the heat he's having where he lives. It's pretty warm where I am right now, too. I have a fan blowing around my room and having the window open. I saw that Eric gave me a gift with a letter, and to be honest, I really like the gifts that Eric does get me, since he looks loaded and probably has a lot of bells. The gift was a flower bag for a white rose. I was a bit disappointed, I just wanted new furniture for my house, but I gave an interested smile since I'd never had this kind of flower before. My memory then jumped back to remember that Eric planted flowers in my town along with the holes. It's a memory that I really don't want to look back on. I went back into my home and placed a flower bag in the dresser that I bought off Nook and went off into town. I spent less time in my town than I normally do and I thought of going to Eric's town. I had nothing better to do with my free time. I hopped on the train and headed to Leafy. As I went my way to his house, I saw that he had some new animals moving and some of the animals are even moving on top of his ground design. I went into Eric's house and he wasn't there. His house though, it had campfire and bonfire places in different sections of the town, he even blocked off his other room section, so I can't explore his house other than the upstairs in his basement. I first went upstairs, the upstairs room was completely empty, the only thing that wasn't there was just the, uh, the only thing that was there was just the default bed. I went to his basement and it too was empty, I didn't see Eric on my way to his house at all, so I went on to, you know, go find him. I spent around 10 minutes looking for the guy, but no sight of him. I had no choice but to leave, but then I came to realize that he may have been in my town while I was here. I rushed back to the train station and headed back to my town. When I arrived, I immediately went around my town, looked from top to bottom, looking at the animals and looking for holes and flowers. The search ended up seeing that he did zero damage to my town. I gave a huge sigh of relief, turned off the game since it was nearly late, and I have school tomorrow. I placed my DS on my desk and went into bed. I spent about near 10 minutes just staring up at the dark ceiling, that is, 
being shined by the street light, and while I lay there I kept thinking about Eric. Who is he? I continued to think. With the sounds of siren in the background, am I free from him? I gave a small chuckle knowing that he may not bother me again. I also kept saying the same thing over and over again. Is he in my game right now? I wanted to go back, but it was late. Plus, if he's as young as I thought he would be, he's also in bed right now too. Close my eyes to drift off to sleep, with the sounds of siren echoing through the street. I came back from school and saw my mother sitting on a chair with her hand on her head. I thought she was stressed out from work. She looked at me and stood up and went off to the kitchen. I saw an open newspaper on the table of where she was. I looked at the open newspaper and saw the following headline. House fire kills young boy. As I kept reading, I saw a picture of the young boy. The boy looked young, about the age of 10. He has blondish hair and green eyes. Another picture of the boy reads, Eric Thompson, age 9. Eric? Wait. Eric was it? Wait. Eric? I stood there in disbelief while my eyes were wide open. I kept thinking if this was the same Eric from that game, but that's impossible. Is this the same one, or was it just a major coincidence that a boy with the same name died? Housefire? I remember looking back in the game. Eric's house was covered in fireplace and bonfire. The last thing he told me was good. And the clothes he wore last time I saw was his skull. Did, did he plan his death? Was he telling me that he was going to die? No, 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 that can't be possible. As I walked to the kitchen, I saw my mom looking at me. She walked up to me, looked like she was crying. Did she know this kid? Was he a child of a friend of hers? That would probably make sense for the way she he was able to know where but c could it? She let out a big sigh and looked me in the eyes. I have some bad news for you. Your cousin is dead. Cousin? Er Eric was my cousin? I stood there giving a confused look. I wondered if she knew what I was thinking. That I didn't know I had a cousin that was named Eric. My mom then pulled out a picture of her wallet and showed me a family group I had. I saw myself sitting on the ground giving a childish face and then my mom pointed her finger at a young boy. He had blondish hair, green eyes, and it looked like the same boy from the picture on the newspaper, only younger. My mother stood up and went off towards the living room. She walked away and she was rubbing her eyes to wipe away her tears, but I already saw them. After I saw my mom leaving, all I did was just stand there looking at the ground. I placed my backpack on the floor, slowly went to my room, and my head in total silence. The house was also quiet too. I closed the door, flopped on my bed on my face, turned around on the bed and I laid there, staring at my ceiling. Five minutes. I assumed it had been five minutes since I don't have a watch and mirror clock. <sighs> Got out of bed, grabbed the DS. I really didn't know what I was doing. I thought it was crazy, but I needed to see if this was true. I needed to see if this wasn't what it seems. I was breathing heavily, saying the same thing numerous times. There's millions of people named Eric. <sighs> I booted the game up. I saw that I had letters. Four. Two from the animal neighbors. Two from Tom Nook and one from Eric. Hey friend, if you are reading this, then I am dead. I had so much fun with you and I wish I kept playing with you. You are awesome, from your friend Eric. So it really was this Eric. All the anger that I had on him was all gone. How could I be angry at him? He's dead. He's not here to defend himself. Besides, he was just a kid. A kid who's having the time of his life with me. I closed the inventory went off to town. I didn't know that I was going to do in town. I had nothing to do in there. So I decided to just head off to Nookling store. As I entered the shop, I ended up actually having a globe available for sale. It was very lucky, since I remember the first thing that Eric asked me if I had a globe. As for the globe itself, it wasn't very expensive. So I bought the globe, went off home right away, placed a globe near the back wall, and placed a white rose he gave me right in front of it. Yes, Eric. I do have a globe. Okay, well, that was long as hell, but was it good for a creepypasta of the month? Yes and no. Now, first off, the story feels very padded, and I felt a lot of it to be thrown out, kind of like LME SKD didn't do yet but that one really does deserve its length and I'll get to it one day but at least it's not you know happy happy which is coming for those waiting it's just incredibly fucking long novel creep pasta that's what we'll call it but no this one feels a lot like funny mouth with the misspellings from the um you know offending pro uh, you know offending antagonist and the random character popping into your domain to just replace you know refer sales with animal crossing and I wanted to make sure that a creep pasta that really did go for this refreshing tape which, you know, obviously has been done before, but it is one of my favorite concepts would, you know, be delivered with no loss in translation, despite some of its, you know, many spelling and grammatical flaws. Now, the whole idea of Eric was, once again, really nice, and all the phenomenon in that happens in the game feels quite real, even though I'm not really an Animal Crossing player, so I don't know much about the game, but, um, you know, from what I googled and what I, you know, played from the games that I have, you know, it doesn't seem to throw in random scenarios that makes no sense in the context of the game world and how the gameplay works. Now, I don't want to dwell too much time from all of you since this is a very long affair, but in the end, I feel like the whole tale feels very padded in a way, and it could have cut to the chase a lot faster versus Funny Mouth, where it was long, 
but it was tied very fluently. And honestly, in the end, when Eric was dead, it ended in this very beautiful manner, which creepypastas don't tend to do often, and it was a nice note. You know, although it was sad, but it was better than, you know, just ending in a way that other creepypastas often do. So all in all, I thought it was quite long for what it was in the end. But, you know, that ending did make it worth reading uh, all the way through. And from a tech standpoint, it made sense, and the game wasn't arbitrarily chosen. Now, do I think this is a creepypasta of the month? Kind of. I mean, I like the concept, but, you know, it's not entirely unique. I just feel it's a lot more padded. But do you think so? What would you rate this creepypasta, and what would you change to make it better? Let me know in the comments below. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you liked what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out.